All right, uh, let's go over the relationship between these three. I think that you have seen it before, so I'll write it down. Hopefully, it looks familiar when I have finished writing down, and we won't need to discuss it. But you know, if you have questions, let me know. So this is the memorized relationship between all these three. Omega is related to the frequency this way. Angular frequency omega is equal to 2 pi times frequency f. The way I remember it is f is given in cycles per second. I want omega in radians per second. One, rad oh, sorry, um, one cycle is 2 pi radians. That's why there's this 2 pi there. Good. And period, it's most directly related to the frequency. Period is equal to um, 1 over frequency. So if I want to relate period, all the way to angular frequency, that would be, uh, um, so f is equal to omega over 2 pi, so it'll be 2 pi over period. Good? And uh, it's in this expression, oh, wait, what, what, omega, oh, p is equal to 2 pi over omega, or another way say is omega is equal to 2 pi over period. And um, by the way, this expression is kind of a justification for what I was saying, that wavelength is the spatial version of period. Um, the relationship is the same, but let me not dwell on it. So let me actually plug this in to rewrite this in terms of, I guess the most natural one to write it in is actually frequency. Then this is another way I could write down the mathematical representation of this wave as amplitude times sine of um, 2 pi over lambda x minus, rewrite omega in terms of frequency, 2 pi times frequency times time. Good. Just as a reminder, the only variables here are the ones that I'm going to rewrite in purple, x and t. Those are the only variables here. The rest are supposed to be constant. And so, you know, this is another way you could write down the mathematical representation of your wave. And um, so this form is really why this is the preferred form. And this is really why we introduce wave number. When you try to describe a wave mathematically in terms of wavelength, just because of the way, you know, sign is defined, you'll get a bunch of factors of 2 pi. And you could say this, the reason we introduce wave number k is so that we don't have to write down all those 2 pi's. So 2 pi is included into k, it's here. <laughs> we remember that that's there, but when we are writing down, we just have to write down k, not 2 pi over lambda. And we just have to write down omega, not, um, not, you know, not 2 pi times frequency or not 2 pi over period. But, so this is what I'll tell you. You should be familiar with all these different relationships. So that if a question asks you to write down a mathematical representation of wave, um, write down a mathematical representation of wave into something that looks like this, and if it somehow gives you the period and wavelength, you should be able to figure out what is my wave number and what is my angular frequency. Okay, so before we go into break, uh, let me go over just uh, one more idea that relates to these parameters. So, um, so what you're going to find is that uh, wave velocity is a special quantity. So let me ask you this question. What things can you do that will cause this wave to move across the screen faster. So um, let me actually do that with a physical example first. So if I have this uh, slinky, and you can, you have a sense of wave speed, like I move one end, oops, ah, okay. <laughs> you have some sense of the speed of the wave. I move one end, and it takes some amount of time to get to that end, right? Let's just say this is about a meter and 1,001, 1,002, about two meters per, sorry, 0.5 meters per second. 
right? That's the wave speed right now, right? Now, this is my question. What can I do to change the wave speed so that it moves across faster? Um, will it move across faster if I put a greater amount of energy? If I make the amplitude bigger, will it move across faster? Yeah, you just saw that it didn't really move across fa any faster, right? Let me do it again. So small amplitude, 1,001, 1,002. Big amplitude, 1,001, 1,002. About the same amount of time. Maybe it's not the amount of energy. Maybe I should shake faster, higher frequency. Let's see if that changes it. Um, 1,001, oh, wait, 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 I should, I can't, I'm not a good drummer. <laughs> so this is what I should do on this end. And let me do that and then count 1,001, 1,002. 1,001, 1,002. So whether I do this shaking gradually, 1,001, 1,002, or whether I do the shaking really quickly, the amount of time it takes to travel across doesn't change. So what you're finding with this example is that wave velocity, it's a constant. It's, uh, um, it, it's, uh, it's the property of the medium. Yes? Yeah. So I want you to uh, mention that now, before I write down the next expression, that's going to come out of this expression that uh, we wrote down earlier. This, uh, uh, this expression here that we wrote down earlier, it can be actually used to uh, write down one of the most uh, important expression in dealing with the periodic waves. Let me write it down in equation form here. Kv, Kv is equal to omega. So let me solve it for V, wave speed, wave velocity. V is equal to omega over K. Um, let me do a little bit of algebra and actually rewrite this in terms of something that, um, that's more intuitively relatable. That would be for omega, it would be the frequency is more intuitively relatable. There's a whole unit of frequency, hertz. I don't know if I mentioned it. Um, and k, we will rewrite it in terms of lambda, wavelength. So when I do that, omega is equal to 2 pi times frequency. Uh, k is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So these 2 pi's cancel out. That's nice. I kind of don't want to write the writing 2 pi's all the time. And so one over lambda, lambda goes back on the uh, numerator. So we get wave speed v is equal to uh, frequency times the wavelength lambda. This is one of the most important relationships. But as you learn this relationship, what you have to know and memorize and internalize is that the fact this wave velocity v is property of medium. Property of medium. Another way to say it is in most cases, this v is a constant. So that actually has an implication. So let me uh, illustrate that implication on this um, on this simulation here. So you have seen um, how fast the, the wave moves across, right? And what you have seen with this illustration here is that when you increase the frequency, the wave velocity V doesn't increase. But because this uh, expression relates three variables together, if one changes, if frequency changes, something must change. The intuitive thing might have been to say the velocity increases, but you have seen this in this physical example that that doesn't happen. So what must change if the frequency increases, for example? Lambda, the wavelength, the only last remaining quantity, this must change. And that's what you can see with the simulation. I can actually change the frequency here. Let me double the frequency. What do you think will happen with the wavelength? Decrease down to how much? Half, right? OK, let's try that. Double the frequency, 3 hertz. And yeah, wavelength decreases down to half. 
So this is one of the important properties of a periodic wave. So uh, let me, before we go into break, let me just tell you this. This is what you must to do if you want to change the, the, the velocity of the, of the wave velocity. You have to change the medium itself. So how you change the medium, it kind of depends on the, what the medium is. The sound waves that you will deal with in the lab today, the way you can change the medium, you can change the temperature and the pressure. With this uh, slinky, one way I can change it is, or two ways I can change it, I can change tension and I can change the linear mass density of this. So if I pull this, I have increased the tension and I have also made it less dense. You will see that the wave now travels faster. Right? Same distance, but doesn't want travels faster. So, or in this simulation, this is what I can do. I can keep the frequency the same, but by decreasing tension, I can decrease the wave speed. Then what you see is that even with the same frequency, wavelength decreases because the, uh, so wavelength decreases if wave, wave speed decreases. Yeah. So for today, uh, it looks like I don't have time to actually drive it, but let me write this down as a formula that I really think you should memorize. I will drive this maybe next Tuesday. Um, so there's a formula that you can look up in your textbook. That's the speed of wave on a string. And this is a formula that's relevant only for this case. That speed is given by square root of tension divided by linear mass density, meaning however much there is divided by the length of the string. 